All right, guys, so we are inside the beautiful world of Blender, and here we're going to be creating that amazing scene which you saw in the intro. So yeah, let's start with the with um uh let's start with the surface. Yeah, so I'm just going to delete the default cube, and I'm going to delete the default camera and the light as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using an add-on, uh, which is if I go into the preferences, edit preferences, and then if you go to add-ons, if I search extra objects, you you, you should just um turn this on, and we're going to be using an uh, object from this. Okay, so yeah. Uh, after that, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be going to add mesh and here we could have added a cube But what we're going to be doing instead is that we're going to be adding uh, We're going to be going down and we're going to be adding this round cube now what this is what this is is that well uh, I mean as the name suggests it's a cube but round right so we're going to be using this one So this subdivisions I'm going to increase it to something like say Something like that uh, Actually, let's do six because we're going to be adding smoothing uh, later on, so it's going to be good. Anyways, so now we can just take this cube and we can like basically do whatever we want. So yeah, um, alrighty. So what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be uh, creating the floor first, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down like that, something like that, and well, let's scale it down like that as well. Um. Let's go to front view and let's scale it down a little bit and let's scale this like that. Okay, so that is one slab. Uh, I'm going to make it a little less, a little thinner. So yeah, that works. So that is one slab and we're going to be adding multiple of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, uh, I'm going to press shift and D. And now you can see we, can, we have duplicated this. Now, if I move my mouse and if I left click anywhere, it's just gonna draw, drop that object right there. But I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna press my right click button. So I'm just gonna do that. And now you can see the position has been reset. But if over here, you can see that we have one round cube and we have another round cube as well. So basically it has been duplicated. However, the position has not changed. So I'm just gonna select the move tool and then I can just move it along. Let's just go to the top view. Let's that like that. Now what I'm going to do is that, uh, actually let me just align them properly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be selecting both of these and then I'm going to be uh, shift D once again. And so I'm going to be duplicating both of them. And let's just move these a little there and perfect. Cool. So I'm just going to duplicate all of these. And so actually let's just have six of these. Yeah, I think six should be good. Actually, let's have eight. Why not? Uh, shift D once again. And move them along. Perfect. So now you can see we have our uh, slabs ready. However, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add some, uh, like make it a little ununiform. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be moving this a little there. And uh, this, you can move this a little here. Just adding some ununiformity. ununiformity. Um, not too much just slight um just a slight amount of um non-uniformity would do okay perfect so after that what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be starting with the house now before that let's just save our project i'm just going to save it on desktop well not desktop uh, let's do it on blender work and here i'm just going to name it um house yeah just house for now let's do it house two because i think i made another house before so i'm just going to name it house two Cool. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be creating a pyramid. So to add a pyramid, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be, uh, first of all, adding a cube. And I can see we have a cube. And then I'm just going to, first of all, position it correctly so that we have whatever we want. We have it like in the correct position. Something like that. Let's move it up. Actually, I'm just going to scale it down because we don't want it to be that tall. So I'm just going to scale it down down and down uh just a second just scale it a little up up a little up in the z-axis move it up i think that should be good enough no actually i'm just gonna make it a little taller and that is perfect cool so first of all you're gonna be noticing that this is not uh, a um what do you call it it's not a pyramid so for that i'm, I'm just gonna be making some minor adjustments and now what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be selecting this and we're going to be going to the edit mode. 
So right now we're in the object mode and we're going to be going to the edit mode. And here what we can do is that we can uh, go to this uh, edge select mode. Yeah, we can basically select edges. So I'm just going to select these two. You can just select any edge, right? So I'm just going to select this one. I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to select this one as well. Now you can see we have uh, both of these edges selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the scale tool and I'm going to scale them down. So you're going to see that this just, um, just scales them down and it becomes something like a pyramid. Cool. So that is exactly what we wanted. And I'm just going to go to object mode, go back to object mode and just save your project so that we don't lose any progress. Anyway, cool. So yeah, apart from that, next up what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be working on, so we're going to be adding a uh, cube on the top. So for that, we're going to be adding another uh, round cube. Uh, where is the round cube? Here it is. And we can just increase the subdivisions. And then what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be um, decreasing the scale like that. And let me just make it very like something like that. Let's um, increase the scale. And let's uh, make it make it this wide. So I'm just going to be reducing uh, the amount of um, uh, amount of uh, roundness we have by reducing this uh, this radius. So I'm just going to make it something like that. Actually, 0 0.05 would be good. That's perfect. So now we can just uh, move it up and let's just scale it down. Uh, and so I'm just going to go to the front view to align this. I'm just going to align it like that. And we can scale it down. Something like that should do. Let me <clears throat> let me just increase uh, the length of this. So I'm just going to go to the side view and we can tweak it from here. Perfect. Cool. So now we have this and we're going to be what we're going to be doing next is that we're going to be uh, actually duplicating this. So we can just uh, we just press shift D and it's going to moving it forward. And now we're going to be uh, decreasing the size in this axis. Uh, just like that. And let's uh, increase the size of this in and let's and let's increase the size of this overall, right? So I'm just going to increase the size of this like that, and we're going to be moving it forward. So something like that. Let's uh, decrease the size a little bit, a little too large. Something like that should be perfect. How about we move this forward? Yeah, so something like that should do. That is perfect. Cool. So next up, I'm just going to duplicate this once again. Uh, and I actually, instead of duplicating this and instead of pressing shift, sorry. So instead of pressing shift D and just moving it back, we could do that. However, I'm going to show you another method of this as well. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be using a mirror modifier. So I'm just going to select this and then we're going to be going down to the modifier menu and we can add a modifier. Now this time we're going to be adding a mirror modifier. So if I add this, you're going to see that nothing has really happened. Uh, that is because we have to um, actually we have to actually tell it an object to mirror onto, like so, an object which is going to be the center of the mirror, right? So I'm just going to be setting this object as the center of, center of the mirror. So I'm just going to select this, and here in the mirror object, we can just use this eyedropper tool, and we can just select this cube. Now you're going to see automatically that we have another cube at the end of this. Um, um, what do you call it? This cube. So yeah, we don't need to have, we don't need to make any adjustments to this. It's just going to work uh, the way it is. Cool. So next up, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be working on the side um, side panels, which, which is basically going to act as a roof. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you guessed it, I'm going to create another cube. Uh, but this time, what I'm going to do is instead of creating another cube, we could just duplicate one of these. I'm just going to shift D, move it up. And we can just use this as well. We can just use this um, instead of like creating another cube and you do all that stuff. Right? So we can just increase the scale. I'm going to go to the side view so that we can align it properly. And we can like scale it and stuff. Something like that should be good. A little forward. And yeah. Okay. Now the scale, the size of this is very large. So I'm just going to decrease it like that. And let's decrease the height as well. That is perfect. Cool. So we can, uh, what we can do now is that we can um, just move it up, go to the front view, and we can rotate this now. Uh, yes, yeah, so just use the rotate tool and ro rotate it something like that. Something like that should be good because we're going to be adding more of these. Uh, and we're going to be adding it right here. 
Now that is uh, pretty large, I'd say. It's pretty thick, actually. So I'm just going to reduce the thickness. Uh, something like that should do. And apart from that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be increasing the length of this as well. So yeah, something like that should do. Perfect, cool. So once we have one of this, I'm just going to move it a little up. So that we're not actually seeing that area. Move it up. Perfect, cool. And now we can just duplicate this. I'm just going to go to the front view. And now I'm going to uh, select this, press Shift D. And actually, right now, we, we don't need to right click. We can just move it with our cursor. So I'm going to Shift D and I'm going to be moving it to the other one right here. Shift D once again, move it something like that. Now this obviously doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be a rough, uh, roughly the same size. So we're going to see, let's see how it looks. It looks a little um, close to each other. They look way, way too close to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these. Actually, I'm just going to delete these two. And I'm going to take this and move it for move it down. So I'm just going to see which uh, orientation looks good. So I'm going to, and then I'm going to use that in all my future um, duplications. Okay, so I think that should be good. Let's just move it a little down. How about that? Yeah, I think that should be good. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So we can uh, now we can just duplicate it once again. Shift D and let's do this. Let's actually rotate this one a little bit. I just pressed R for the rotate tool. And we're going to, we're going to be doing the same with this as well. Let's rotate it slightly. So what we can do now is, we, is that we can select all these, just press shift and just click on each of these. And then we can duplicate all these, right? So I'm just gonna, that's just gonna save us some time. Place it something like that. And let's rotate these as well. So that's a quick hack which you could use to um, speed up your workflow. Alrighty, perfect. So this is looking pretty good. And let's um, select three of these again. Let's duplicate them once again, shift D and move it down. Perfect, cool. So these don't need to be perfect because we are uh, going for a rather imperfect and a rather raw render. That is what we're going for in this one. So yeah, it's pretty good. And now let's just um, take two of these, duplicate them down, and let's uh, let's place them right here for some uh, for now. For now. Then we're going to be rotating them and we're going to be adjusting them in just a bit. And we can move it forward. I think that should be good. Yeah, that works. Perfect. So now we have one side ready. Now what we could do is that instead of um, either we could um, take all these and just duplicate them and just do the whole, the whole other side once again, but that's going to be a very inefficient method. So instead, what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be using symmetry on this. And we're going to be using that exact same mirror modifier on this. So right now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be using the mirror modifier on all these. Now, the mirror modifier only works on one object at a time. So either I could like go and add a modifier on all these. So for example, I'm going to add one on this, uh, set this as the mirror object, uh, deselect the y x axis, select the y axis, and I could do repeat for all these, but that's going to be very inefficient as well. And it's not going to be that good. So I'm just going to remove this. And what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be making this whole one object, all these one object. So I'm just going to press one, shift, shift, and sh just shift select all these. So once all of them are selected, what I want you to do is that first of all, I want you to shift D them once again, and I'm going to be, uh, I want you to um, move them. Uh, I just want you to uh, align them in the Y axis and just move them away. So just move them away. I'm, I'm going to be teaching you, I'm going to be telling you why we're doing this for now. And the thing is, uh, we are going to be joining these all into one object. Okay. So, but however, let's say we want to make an adjustment in the future, then we were, we're not going to be able to ad adjust like these individual, um, slabs. So that's why we are saving a backup of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these and you can see all these are selected. I'm going to, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to press a new collection. Okay. So now we have all this, uh, this new collection and I'm going to drop these into this new collection. I'm going to name it, uh, slabs backup. So if we uh, in the future want to make any adjustments or want to make any tweaks uh, to this, we can just simply use this, we could just move it and we could then use them. 
Okay, so that's the reason why we, we did that. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sele uh, select all these once again. Shift select all these. And now we can just press Control J and now they're, they're, they're just gonna be converted into one um, object. So I'm just gonna rename it slabs. Cool, slabs and this, this is just one object. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a mirror modifier on this. So I'm just going to add a modifier, mirror, and I'm just going to be setting this as the mirror object. So I'm just going to be deselecting the x axis and selecting the y axis. So now you can see it has been perfectly uh, matched onto the other side. It has been perfectly mirrored onto the other side. Perfect. So that is complete. And next up, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be working on the front side of this. Um, what do you call it? This front side of this house. But before that, let me just increase the size of this. I think it looks way too small. Let's move forward, forward as well. Something like that should be good. Yeah, perfect. Let me just increase the size of this as well. Because we're going for a stylized look and in a stylized look, everything is like bigger than it than it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah, cool. So now we're going to be adding uh, rounded cubes to this front area to give it like a look for, for example, to make it look like there are like slabs placed on this. And yeah, I'm just gonna, when, it, when we're going to be doing it, it's going to make sense. I, I'm not sure how to explain it, but yeah, we're going to be, uh, you're going to see when we make it. So for that, what, we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, selecting another round, round cube and let's um, decrease the height, uh, decrease the scale like that. And let's make it taller, oh, sorry, wider. Let's, uh, let's actually make it thinner and let's decrease the uh, radius. So 0 0.01 should be good, I think. Yeah, that's perfect, cool. So now what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be um, uh, taking these and we're gonna be placing them on top. So right now you're gonna see that we uh, are, there's some some of it is intersecting, some some part of it is intersecting uh, with that. And we definitely don't, definitely don't want that. So I'm just gonna uh, go with it for now, but then we're gonna be fixing it in just a minute, okay? So I'm just gonna be placing it right there. And we are, right now what we're gonna be, and next, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be going to edit mode. And here, we can uh, go to this um, vertices select mode. And we can select these vertices and these vertices. And then we can scale them down. Uh, but right now, you can see that if I scale them down, you're going to see that only this part of the vertices is selected, which looks really bad. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be turning on this x-ray mode. And when we select the x-ray mode, and now if we select all the front, all these vertices, you're going to see that all the vertices in the beh behind are also selected. So now I'm going to scale them down. Something like that should do. Let's select these and let's move them out. Cool. Yeah, that is perfect. Let me just go to object mode and make sure that it looks good. You can see it looks perfect. So now what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be, um, once again, uh, actually, let's just make this a little shorter. Shorter, how about that? Uh, let me just move it up. Okay, so now we have one of these done. And let's uh, go to um, add and let's add another round cube. So this time we are going to be doing the same exact thing. But this time we're going to be making one, adding one down. And let's, um, let's actually just undo it. And let's add another one because uh, I forgot to change the settings in the start. Uh, round cube. Let me just uh, change the settings. So for example, let's, um, the X uh, setting should be the same basically. Uh, let's add a cube, let's add a rounded cube. Uh, and let me just make the y, y side something like that. Actually, let's make it something like that. Change the Z, uh, let's make the Z like that basically. Because we wanna have like three of these slabs, so yeah. That should be perfect. Let's move it up. Let's align it. This is way too um, thick for us. Actually, we don't need. We don't even need to do that because we can just move it back. It's not going to be that visible. And yeah, I think it's aligned pretty nice. So let's um, do that same exact thing which we did with the others. Um, I'm just gonna reduce the size of it a little bit like that. Let's move it up. And let's now decrease the size of the, what do you call it? Um, that, um, the vertices, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this. First of all, I'm gonna go to X-ray mode. Let's go to edit mode now. And select these vertices. And let's um, bring them somewhere there. 
I'm gonna select the move tool and move it a little there. There, cool. And let's select these as well. Let me scale them down. Let's scale them up a little bit. Uh, I think that should be good. Yeah, that's perfect. Go to object mode, X-ray, oh, just turn that off. And okay, so right now we are having a problem. And the reason for that is because I uh, scaled them down in all the axes, okay? We only wanted to um, scale them down in, in the, the, what do you call it? The X axis, right? So I'm just gonna undo all that. Control Z and cool. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be undoing, uh, and we're gonna be scaling it down just in the X axis. Right now we're doing it just in the X axis and you're gonna see that it's perfect. So I'm just gonna move it a little there. So the reason why I'm not cutting these small issues out is because I wanted to sh I want to show you the actual process of uh, of of an artist. I want you to, I want you to show I want you to see the actual process of of an artist working on a project because the thing is when you see tutorials everything is just so perfect. It's just people do uh, these tutorials multiple times and they just show you the perfect cut part of it, right? But in reality, when you're making stuff everything is not perfect right uh, it's, you, you you do face a lot of problems and you do come uh, come across many many issues so i just wanted to see all that all those issues and i want you to learn from it right so yeah so for the next one instead of creating an, another smooth cube another sorry round cube i think that's what it's called yeah round cube we're just going to be duplicating this one uh so i'm just gonna shift d and move it down perfect i'm just gonna move it something like that and let's go to our front view and let's change the vertices. Let's modify them. Uh, so yeah, just go to X-ray mode. I just forgot that. <laughs> Why do I keep forgetting that? Anyways, so I'm just gonna do that and let's um, increase the scale. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna select these. Just hold shift and then select them. And then we're gonna be moving them down. Um, something like that should do. Let's scale them up a little bit. Just a tab bit. That is perfect. So now let's go to our object mode. Let's turn on, turn off the X-ray mode. And I can see we have this uh, cool looking effect. Okay, so next up what we're gonna be doing is that we, gonna, we are going to be working on the door. Alrighty, so for the door, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be creating another round cube. Uh, round cube, perfect. And I'm just gonna increase the radius to something like 0 0.03 maybe. No, actually, I'm just going to make it 0 0.02, not more than that. And let's uh, work on the size. So something like that should be good. Yeah, let's may just make it 0 0.01 because we don't, we don't want it to be that smooth, right? So I'm just going to make the size something like that and X should be small. That is perfect. Cool. So I'm just going to select that. Ready to go? Yeah, here. I'm just going to select that. And I'm going to move it up. And now it's just uh, a matter of like scaling things down and just working with this working with the look i'm just gonna make it a little wider and now i'm gonna uh, duplicate this once again and we are going to be moving it down and we're going to be rotating it 90 degrees so the way you rotate um exactly 90 degrees because right now if you see um on the top left hand side you're going to see this rotate rotation um degrees it's very hard to actually stop it perfectly at 90 degrees right so what you can do is that you can hold control to rotate it in, in increments of five so I'm just going to rotate it in 90 degrees and that is perfect. So next up, we, we're just going to be, um, we'll get something like that and let's move it back. And we're just going to be moving both of these back so that they're actually flushed with, uh, with the, with the, with this face. Anyways. Okay. With the front, with the front, uh, with the front of the house. Anyway, so I'm just gonna duplicate this once again. And I'm gonna move it here. That is perfect. So I'm just gonna move both of these a little, a little up. And I'm gonna move this up as well. Because we want the door to be a little taller. Yeah, that is perfect. Okay, cool. So next up, what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be uh, making the inside part of the door. Uh, but for that, we can just duplicate these. Shift D and just move them across. And I'm just gonna actually let's bring these, bring all these a little out so that we can have these ones inside, something like that. Let me just make these wider. Um, so I'm just gonna increase the scale like that. Cool. So I'm just gonna 
make the scale. Uh, I'm just gonna make it make them even more wider, something like that. And let's um duplicate this once again. Add it right there. So we can just duplicate it again and move them. And now, lastly, I'm just gonna duplicate one more of these, and I'm gonna add it right here. Alrighty, perfect. So I'm just gonna let me just move all this a little across to the left so that we can have more uniformity. Perfect, cool. So now, uh, actually, let's just move all these a little behind, a little back. So I moved it a little back, and I think our door now is looking pretty good. So now what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be adding a window uh, over here. And uh, for that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be adding a mesh, which is going to be a torus. So I'm just going to scale it down, move it up, and then we're going to be rotating it 90 degrees. So I'm just going to rotate it in uh, the Z, uh, sorry, the Y axis. I'm going to hold control for 90 degrees. And that is perfect. I'm just going to go to the front view and I'm, and we're going to be aligning it properly. So I want it to be something like that. Move it back. And yeah, cool. So that is our, um, our, um, what do you call it? Our window. And I'm just going to be scaling a little up. Oops, not like that. Scaling a little up. And yeah, that is perfect. Cool. So our window is looking pretty good. And now let's move on to the next step, which is um, making uh, the feet of this. Basically, we have uh, we're gonna have feet on this, uh, which is gonna which are basically holding them up, holding this whole house house up. And for that, I'm just gonna duplicate this once again. I'm gonna move it, and I'm gonna be uh, scaling it down. Something like that, and we're gonna be scaling it down like that as well. And now let's move it down. And yeah, and we're gonna be setting it, or uh, just placing it somewhere right here. Okay, cool. Okay, so next up, I'm just gonna be uh, duplicating this once again, Shift D, and I'm gonna be moving it down, and we're gonna be scaling it down. And this is all just trial and error, and you just need to see what looks the best, and you just need to make your own creative decision. In fact, I would suggest you to make your own changes and make your own uh, creative decisions, because that's what's gonna make you a better artist, to be honest. Just copying, uh, just copying a tutorial is not going to make you, uh, it's not going to be that beneficial, right? Like it is beneficial. However, um, making your own work and making your own um, uh, tweaks to the tutorials, that's going to be the most beneficial for you. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be selecting both of these, Shift D, and let me just place them right there, just just like that. Now let's select this, these two, and those two. Oops, not that that and that oops let me just go ahead i'm just going to select that and i'm going to select that and now we can hold shift and select these two as well so i'm just going to go to the side view and we're going to be duplicating all these to the behind to the back side as well so now you can see we have feet on all four sides okay perfect so now let's um uh, start working on the stairs now the stairs are going to be slightly complex uh but don't worry I, i'm just going to walk you through it and it's going to be very easy so for the stairs, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be, uh, again, once again, just duplicating one of these, uh, Shift D and move it forward. And now I'm going to be scaling it down, something like that. And let's um, scale it something like that. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, so yeah, before the stairs, I just want to make a floor. I'm just going to add a mesh, which is going to be a plane. Now, this is because uh, the stairs actually need to go somewhere and they do need to have a ground. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And now I'm gonna scale up this um, plane. So I just used S for the scale tool. And <clears throat> yeah, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be um, taking this and I'm gonna be rotating this in uh, the Y axis. Just hold shift for rotating it slowly. And I'm just gonna go to the front view and I'm gonna be placing it something like that, but it's too thick for the moment. Uh, it's too thick at the moment, so I'm just going to reduce the scale. And I'm going to be making it a little thinner like that as well. Cool. So let's move it forward. Yeah, and that should be good. So I'm just going to move it a little down, something like that. Actually, no, that is good. Uh, and I'm just going to be duplicating it once again. And we're going to be adding an, another one right here. Let's go to the front view and let's see if it's aligned properly. 
and that seems to be good. Perfect. So now we're going to be adding um, slabs on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm going to duplicate this once again. Oops, I'm just going to duplicate this once again, shift D. I'm going to be scaling it down. I'm going to be moving it forward. And just this is just some very basic stuff. And yeah, so all you need to know is the basic tools of, uh, of uh, Blender and you should be good to go. Alrighty, so I'm going to be moving it down, back, and a little up. That should be good. So I'm going to shift D, uh, duplicate it once again, and we're going to be adding another one, which is going to be lower. Let's just move it up a little bit. Shift D, duplicate once again, and just final step should go there. And now, voila, our stairs are, are, are done, and they were, I know I said there's, they're going to be a little, um, tricky, they're going to be a little difficult, but they turned out to be very simple. So yeah, uh, that, those are our stairs and that is basically done. So apart from that, next up, what we're going to be, what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be working on, uh, well, we're going to be adding some, uh, slabs, um, in the front of the house to just give it a more, um, cozy feel. And I'm just going to be duplicating this once again. And, and I've said that for the millionth time, uh, just duplicating it, just duplicating it. Yeah. So there's a lot of duplicating in this tutorial, yeah. But I mean, it is where it is. So I'm just gonna go to the top view, and I'm gonna be scaling it up, something like that. And let's um move this down. Something like that should be good. But I'm gonna um rotate this in the uh sorry in the z axis. Let's duplicate it. And let's rotate it again in the z-axis. Let's um, rotate this a little less. And yeah, let's duplicate this once again. And final step this is going to be the last step. And yeah, we are done with that. So now we're going to be adding some depth of field in this. And when we are going to have a like blurred um, blurred uh, slabs, it's just it's just going to add uh, to the to add to the look okay it's going to make it look better so now we're going to be making uh, the trees and the trees are going to be very very simple to make uh, just like the rest of this tutorial and uh, yeah the way we're going to be making trees is we're going to be using a cylinder first of all a uh, cylinder and let me scale it down move it forward so i'm just going to create two variations of the trees and then we're going to be making uh, and then we're going to be just duplicating them and populating our scene later on uh when we're working on the texturing uh and the uh, the actual rendering rendering part of the scene, but right now I'm, I'm just gonna make one of these, one of the two types, and let's move it down a little bit so that it's um inside the floor, it's intersecting the floor. And next up, what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be, um, <clears throat> so basically we're gonna be creating a few variations of uh, of the tree, right? So one of them is gonna be a uh, cylinder for the trunk, and we're gonna add a um, cone for the top. And uh, I'm just gonna position it properly. Let's scale it down, of course. Um, something like that. Let me just move it forward. Let's actually go to the top view and align it properly with the cylinder so that it's um, it looks good. Then we're gonna be working on the scale. Okay, so right now it's uh, obviously way too small. Uh, I'm just gonna scale it up. Let's scale this up as well. So something like that should be good. Um, let me just move it up a little bit and let's scale it down. Yeah, so that is the perfect size. Okay, cool. Let's scale this down a little bit too. Yeah, okay. So that is one variation of the tree and the other variation is gonna be, uh, it's gonna have the same trunk. I'm just gonna shift D duplicate this. And uh, instead of this um, cone, we're gonna have a circle, uh, sorry, a sphere, a UV sphere on the top. I'm just gonna move it forward, bring it here, move it down. Uh, yeah, and I'm just gonna go to the top view. Let's um, move it so that it's roughly in the center. I'm just gonna move it down so that we can see the center from, uh, see, see the cylinder from the top view. And now we can just align it in the center. And now let's just move it up and scale it up. 
something like that. Now we are obviously going to have uh, like different variations of this. Um, some of them, some of the trees are going to be smaller. Some of the trees are going to be uh, larger, but this is going to be the general size, the general um, average size of the trees and stuff. Anyways, so we are done with the modeling part. And yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, just one thing, let me just move this a little here and let's rotate this slightly less because it was looking way too um, crooked. So yeah, um, I think we are done with that. Now let's actually work on uh, the infinite background. Uh, so right now, <clears throat> if I, uh, for example, let's, uh, let's first set the camera, right? So I'm just gonna add a camera. And right now you can see that we have our camera here. We can move it wherever we want. However, right now the problem is that we're not seeing the world from the camera. So we can just press this button right here and I'm gonna see that we are seeing the world from uh, the view of the camera. But if I move my cursor, if I move my viewport, you're gonna see that we get out of our camera and we cannot um, position the camera like that, right? So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside the camera first, then I'm gonna press this button right here to open the view tool, the view uh, menu, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to press this button right here, which is called camera to view, lock camera to view. And what that's going to do is that it's going to lock uh, the camera to my view. And that's exactly uh, what, it, what it says. Yeah. So right now, if I move this, um, uh, my um, <clears throat> viewport, you're going to see that it is uh, actually moving. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, it's actually moving that um, our camera with my viewport. So perfect. Uh, so now we can just go, uh, you can see we have this camera right here. Uh, let's first move it outside of this um, uh, slabs backup thing because it's not a backup, it's, it's in the main scene. And <clears throat> yeah, so I'm just gonna press this button right here so we can tweak the camera settings. And right now we can see the focal length is 50 millimeters, but I'm gonna set it to 100 millimeters. So the higher the focal length is, the more, um, uh, the shallower your depth of field is gonna be and uh, the more flatter your image is gonna be. So yeah, it's more of a photography concept than a, um, uh, than a 3D modeling concept, but yeah, just just the, just the more you know, right? So I'm just gonna set it to a hundred millimeters for this image, and yeah. So basically, I think this, uh, I'm just gonna close this right here, and I think something like that should be a good um, view. It should be a good um, what do you call it? A good frame. And okay, so one thing which I'm gonna do is that first of all, let me just open those settings again, and let me just um, uncheck this camera to view, so I can actually get out of my uh, actually move my viewport without messing the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and just scale them up, but not in, uh, not, not in the, uh, well, not in the Z axis, right? So just in the X and Y axis. So I'm just going to scale it up like that. Let's move them behind so that they're actually, it looks like, uh, they're, they're actually going out of the, out of the, um, uh, camera. So I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to create another one of these, right? Because just for the heck of it, I'm just going to rotate it slightly, and that is perfect. Cool. So now we have our scene ready, and uh, the the basic basically the basic frame of our scene is basically complete. And now we're going to be working on the infinite background. Now, the, what the infinite background is is like right now, if I go into my camera, you can see we have this clear line which just cuts our background off. And even if you even if we like extend it or like make it big and stuff, it, there still is going to be a line which is going to like um. Uh, it's gonna look bad, right? It's gonna be a line after which, uh, after which we have, we're, we're not gonna have any background, right? So to fix that, we can use an infinite background. Okay. Now, what an infinite background is is that you basically take this end of this plane and you extrude it up, and then you just smooth it out, right? So it's, everything is gonna make a se make sense in just a minute. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it, right? So uh, we can select this plane. Let's go to edit mode, and now we can go to edge select mode. Uh, and <clears throat> now we can select any of these edges, right? So I'm just gonna select this one and I'm gonna press E for extrude. Now if I press E and move it up, you're gonna see that we can extrude this, right? So uh, now we only want it to extrude in the Z axis, so in the vertical axis, I'm just gonna press Z, so it's gonna lock it to Z axis. And now you're gonna see uh, if I press my left mouse, left, mouse, left mouse button, you're gonna see that we uh, have this um, cool looking uh, extrusion. However, if I go back to my camera, you can see we still have this line, right? So in order to get rid of that line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to press control B. Now control B does is basically it bevels it. Okay. So now if I bevel it, you can see that we, uh, we can make it smooth. However, it's still not smooth. It has two of these lines, one right here and one right there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my scroll wheel up and you're going to see it's going to create these segments. It's going to add these, um, segments basically. And the more segments we have, the more smoother our image is going to be. So I'm just going to set it to something like that. I'm going to left mouse button. I'm just going to press my left mouse button and that is perfect. So um, if you want to ex uh, extend this, we can just grab this and we can just move it up. 
something like that should be good. Let's go back to our uh, object mode, save your project. And now if I go to my camera, you can see that if I rotate this in the Z axis, if I rotate it something like that, you're gonna see that um, uh, basically we are having this uh, amazing look, amazing view, which is looking pretty good. Like, and once we render it, you're gonna see that we're not, uh, we, we won't be seeing any um, background. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this and I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna shade smooth. Because right now, if I, uh, I didn't press that by the way, I, didn't, I haven't pressed that. I haven't pressed that yet. So if I go close to it, you can see that we have these lines, these segments, which are pretty visible. So I'm just gonna right click, shade smooth. Now you're gonna see that all those are gone and that is just perfect. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing with this cube, or this, sorry, this uh, sphere, shade smooth, perfect. And with this as well, shade smooth. And uh, now you're gonna see this is very weird. It turned out very weird. And the fix for that is we're gonna go to our modifier menu and we're gonna add a modifier, which is called edge split. Now, once I do that, you're gonna see that it just becomes smooth and it uh, doesn't have that weird effect anymore, right? So the working of this edge plate modifier is a little complex. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go into detail. And yeah, just that's basically it. It just makes your object smooth. Cool. So uh, apart from that, I don't think anything else needs smoothing because we did use that, um, uh, what do you call it? That, um, uh, what was it called? It was called a round cube, yeah. Uh, but we are gonna be smoothing this torus. So I'm just gonna shade smooth and you're gonna see that it doesn't need any uh, extra um, modifications. Cool. So now let's go back to our camera and let's actually try to render this. Uh, and right now you're gonna see that uh, we don't have any lighting, so I'm just gonna go and go and render it. We press that button to render, and I'm gonna see that nothing is really happening uh, because because of two reasons, right? The reason why it's looking bad is because first of all we are in EV render, and I'm just gonna switch to cycles render. If you don't see this menu, just go to your render uh, properties. Just switch to cycles and I'm gonna see that it looks much realistic. However, it still looks very bad because we don't have any lighting. So to add lighting, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna get out of my rendered view and next up, and we're gonna be adding the lighting and textures and rendering it in the next video. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so for the lighting, what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be using an HDRI, a high dynamic range image. Now what a high dynamic range image is, is that I'm just gonna Google it for you to see, HDRI. And you can see <clears throat> it's something like that, okay? Uh, HDRI is basically like this. What happens is that these are 360 degree images, which are very high, dy high dynamic range, right? So you can use them to light your actual scene. So instead of creating individual lights, now we can obviously add light and just point light and we can just light our scene like that, but that's gonna be very time consuming and it's not gonna be that realistic as well. So um, yeah, we can just download HDRIs and we can, uh, you uh, can, you know, um, light our image, uh, light our uh, scene using an HDRI. The best website for me for HDRIs is polyhaven.com, obviously. And uh, yeah, you can just uh, download HDRIs. They're totally free and you don't have to pay anything, uh, right? So um, you can just choose any of these. Uh, and once you've chosen one, for example, if I choose this, uh, we can just download it. But I already do have a, a few HDRIs loaded up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be, uh, first of all, you can go to the word properties, and here you're gonna see in the surface menu, uh, you can see this color, and we can press this yellow dot to add a texture to this, and we're gonna be adding a an environment texture, right? So we can add an environment texture, and after that we're gonna be opening, and open, we can just go to our HDRI library, and you, uh, you can just browse to wherever you downloaded the, uh, the HDRI. So after that we can just choose, choose an HDRI, so I'm just gonna choose this home too. Uh, so now if, you, if I go ahead and render this, you're gonna see that it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So one thing which I am noticing is that this, these shadows look very harsh, don't they? So I'm just gonna change the HDR. I'm gonna see if I find a better one. Let's try home one. That is better, I think. That's much better because it's more of a smooth lighting. Um, but yeah, one other thing which we can also do is that uh, if I go out of my, uh, if I go to my viewport mode, and if I get out of my camera, you're gonna see that if we take this object and if you move it slightly in, so that we're actually covering this, uh, uh, covering this area. Now you're gonna uh, be actually intersecting basically this um, uh, house. I think that should look better. Now if I render it, you're gonna see that it's gonna look better, hopefully. Um, let's see. And yeah, I think that's much better, yeah, isn't it? So cool, we are uh, basically done with the lighting part. As you can see, it was very, very simple. So I'm just gonna save your, and I would just suggest you to save your project right now. So yeah, let's start with the um, 
uh, with the uh, with the textures with the textures and with the um, adding materials and adding colors and stuff anyway so uh, what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be going to this uh, viewport shading mode this is also called the look dev mode and you can see the materials but it's not going to slow down your viewport right because if you go to the rendered mode it's going to it's really going to slow down our viewport and uh, the look dev mode does not do that Cool. So let's go to our camera and let's start adding materials. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a, a primary material for the house, uh, which is going to be dark brown, dark brown. So I'm just going to go to materials and we're going to be creating a new one. And here, what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be um, uh, creating a material. I'm just going to uh, change the base color to something like brown, um, a dark brown. something like that let's go to rendered mode and let's see how it looks in that yeah so i'm not feeling that great about this one uh so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be reducing the specular i'm going to be reducing the reflections and uh we can also increase the roughness a little bit so let's see how that looks and let's make the color a little less dark it's looking very um very dark at the moment let's give it something like that I think that should be good. So let's see how it turns out. How about we make, give it more of a pink vibe? Something like that, maybe. Yeah, I think that is perfect. That is cool. Okay, so that is done. Our primary material is done. And let's apply that same material to these as well. So I'm just going to select this and instead of creating a new material, we're just going to be going to the uh, material browser and we can just add this material exactly. And same with this and same with this. Okay, cool. So now uh, in these, we're also going to be adding that same material. Let's add these. So adding materials uh, is very simple in, in this specific project because um, we don't really have to work with um, reflectance channels and all those other complex stuff. We just need to work with uh, the color channels, which is very, very easy. And yeah, it's very beginner friendly. So I'm just going to render it once again to see how it looks. Okay, yeah, so that looks pretty good. And we can, now we're going to be working on the secondary material, which is going to be um, uh, which is gonna be added to these and these uh, doors and stuff like that. So I'm just going to create a new material. And this one is going to be slightly yellowish. How about something like that? Maybe a little darker. Uh, yeah, something like that should be good. Let's apply it to everything else, which we want to have that material. And <clears throat> then we're going to tweak it. And we're going to see if it needs any improvement. Um, let's add it. Um, cool. So yeah, I think that's basically it. And let's um, apply uh, the primary material to all these as well. And I'm just going to apply it real quick. Now this is generally repetitive stuff and um, I'm pretty sure all of you know how to add materials and stuff uh, because that's very basic. Um, and yeah, so let's render it and let's see how it looks. Okay, so I'm not really feeling that yellow because it's way too bright. Uh, well, not bright, it's way too, um, like, it's very vibrant. I'm just going to reduce the saturation a little bit. Something like that might be good. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Perfect, perfect. And let's um, also reduce the specular as well. Because we don't want any reflections in this render. We want everything to be matte. Okay, perfect. So next up, we're going to be working on the stairs. And the stairs, we're going to be giving uh, the secondary material to these side things. And I'm just going to go back to the look, look dev mode. And the primary material to these steps. Perfect. Now let's actually add the material to the background. So I'm just going to go select the background, the plane, and I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to be giving it a darker color. And it's going to be co contrasting with uh, uh, this um, tree. Uh, uh, sorry, this house. So um, that is way too dark. Um, something like that, probably. How about something like that? Let's see how it looks. That's way too vibrant for a background. So I'm gonna be, uh, how about we do something like a light blue? Yeah, I think a light blue, light blue should be good. 
Yeah, so I think that is uh, perfect. That is the perfect background. And now what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be um, adding these materials to these as well. Let's add primary material. Let's go back to our look dev mode because uh, the rendered view just slows down our viewport very, very much. I'm just going to add it and that is perfect. Okay, so after that, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be adding materials to these um, trees and all that. Uh, so yeah, one tree is going to be green, of course, uh, because trees are green. Uh, and let's apply, let's add a yellow screen to this. Yeah, a, a yellow tint should be good. And this trunk is going to have a brown material. And guess what else has brown material? Basically everything in the scene. So we're going to be using that uh, same exact uh, primary material for this. And this one should be yellow. And we can just set it to this one as well. But no, I'm just going to go for a more vibrant yellow. Um, let's go. Mm, let's go for actually, let's do a blue. Let's do a, no, let's do a pink tree. Because why not? Um, let's go to our um, rendered mode. And let's see how it looks. I'm just going to turn these guides off for a minute so we can actually see how it's uh, how it looks. And yeah, that is basically cool. And uh, now what we're, gonna be, what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be adding uh, these trees and we're gonna be populating the whole scene because right now it looks very dull. So I'm just gonna turn on these guys and uh, let's duplicate this. Let's move it here. Let's increase the sky, uh, scale. Let's, um, let's actually move this, move this forward because when we add the depth of field, it's gonna blur and it's gonna look very good. That should be good. Uh, one should be, um, let's add one there. Let's increase the size scale of this. Let's actually bring this forward because I don't want anything to be parallel to this house, like in the same focal uh, focal plane of the house, because then it's going to be in focus. I want everything to basically be blur, and some things will be less blur, some things will be more blur. So yeah, I don't want anything except for the house to be perfectly in focus. So yeah. And let's add one right here. And let's increase the size of this. No, actually, not. Uh, let's not do that. Uh, let's add a few small ones around this. Let's actually move this one. And actually, let's scale it down. And let's just have it there. Perfect. Um, apart from that, um, let's uh, let's duplicate this. Oops. Let me just. Like that, like that, and that, and let's duplicate that. And let's scale it up. Let's um move it back. Maybe something like that. So maybe somewhere here. Yeah. So I'm just gonna take this one as well, and I'm gonna duplicate it and have one here as well. So the more populated your scene is, the generally generally the better it looks. So yeah, I would just recommend you to add as many as you can, but obviously don't overdo it. Uh, because if you overdo them, then they're going to look, uh, they're going to act uh, against your scene and they're going to make it look very bad. So yeah, that is basically my advice for you guys. And let's delete that one. Let's move this a little there. Because the goal is not to add as many uh, trees as you can. The goal is to actually make it look good as well. Um, and let's uh, take this, let's duplicate it and let's take it back. Let's take it back. I'm just going to close this. Cool. And now we're going to be duplicating this as well. Let's have him there. And now I think we are good to go. I think th that would be enough. That's enough trees for now, I guess. Let's add one right there. Let's increase the scale. Okay, so I'm just gonna add uh, a few more trees in the background because, uh, like this area, this background area is feeling pretty um, like it's feeling pretty empty. So I'm just gonna add a few. Actually, I'm not gonna add a few. I'm just gonna add one. Uh, here. Let's just increase the size of this. Perfect. And now I think it looks pretty uh, complete. Yeah, perfect. So one thing, yeah, one thing which I'm going to do is that I'm going to be adding uh, depth of field now. 
So I'm just going to go to the camera settings and here we can uh, we see this depth of field option. So I'm just going to check this box and now you can see that uh, nothing has happened. <laughs> and that is because we haven't actually set uh, our focus object. So the focus object is basically the object which um, which is going to be in focus exactly but just it's exactly what it means um and i'm just going to set it to uh we can set it anything which is uh, in the main um like focal area right i'm just going to set it to this so let's just select the camera a focus object and i'm just going to select this so this is going to be in focus so if this is this isn't focused then the whole house is basically going to be in focus right and uh this f-stop is the main thing now the the lower the f-stop the higher your depth of field is going to be. And we want our depth of field to be very, very shallow. And uh, uh, basically, the, high, the lower the f-stop, the higher your uh, blur blurriness will be. So we want it to be uh, very blurry. And we want the back uh, of the house to be blurry even. And yeah, so the way we're going to be doing that is by reducing, well, I mean, duh, by reducing this um, uh, depth of field. Uh, the, sorry, this f-stop. So I think something like that should be good. Let's try this. How about that? Yeah, one thing uh, which I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to add material to this. I'm just going to get out of my camera and I forgot to add materials to the feet. So I'm just going to add materials to the feet. Uh, so this one is going to be uh, the primary material. And let's add a primary material to this. And let's add a secondary material to this. Yellow. Perfect. Let's do the same with the other feet as well. Secondary to this. And let's just zoom in a little, a little bit and primary to this and the same thing with these two as well and i'm going to add a material to this as well because why not um add a material oh sorry the pr the secondary and this one is going to be primary secondary and this one last one this is going to be the primary okay perfect so now i'm just going to go back to my camera and now we're going to render it and let's see how it looks so i think it's a little too blurry so i'm just going to increase the uh f-stop quite a little bit how about 0 0.6 let's see how it looks now And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, that's basically it. And our render is uh, almost complete. So yeah, one thing which I'm going to be doing is that, um, well, <laughs> I think it look. I mean, it looks pretty complete. So yeah, that's going to be it. And uh, we're just going to render it now. So for the rendering, I'm just going to go to the render properties and the render engine should be cycles, of course, because l let's try changing to EV and you can see how bad it looks. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go back to um, cycles. Um, and here, what we're going to be doing is that in these um, in these uh, sampling sections, uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to set it to wherever it is. I'm just going to set it to whatever it is, the default settings. And denoise, uh, we're going to set it to Open Image Denoiser, and this is going to be very uh, important because um, uh, what happens is that when uh, when you're rendering, uh, you do get some fireflies and you do get some um, noise here and there. So denoising is just going to remove all that. It's going to, it's going to make our render really good. So perfect. So um, yeah, the denoising should be here. And uh, apart from that, I think everything is perfect. Uh, the only thing which I like to change is inside this color management. Uh, the view transform is going to be filmic and it should, it must be filmic. And this uh, look, what I'm going to do with this look is I'm going to set it to high contrast. Now you can see it immediately looks better. And in, in, in fact, uh, let's set it to medium high contrast. That is perfect. Now, if I set it to none, you can see how washed out it looks. But if I set it to medium high contrast, it immediately just looks better. And we are going to be working on the post-processing of this uh, anyway. Uh, so we are going to be um, editing it inside of Adobe Lightroom. And you can use any, any editing software which you want. Uh, so yeah, I think that render is perfect. And um, apart from that, all these, letting, all these settings are just the, <laughs> good the way they are. And yeah, so let's render it. So I'm just going to press this button right here, render and render image. And let's see uh, if it's rendering. It is. And guys, I'll see you when it's done. All right, guys, so we are done rendering and uh, it's finally done. So yeah, I'm just going to go to this uh, image and we're going to be saving it as, let's save it, uh, let's save it as um, just home to, I guess. And I do already have it saved. So you can just press this button. I'm just going to press cancel because I already did render this. So I'm just going to open it. 
And you're going to see that we have this render. Now what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be opening up Adobe Lightroom and we're going to be uh, editing it uh, in that. However, you can use any other editing software. You can use uh, Snapseed on mobile. You can use Adobe Photoshop Express on, fo on mobile. Or you can uh, use um, Adobe Lightroom on mobile or basically any other editing software. It just, it just has to be a photo editing software. Yeah. And it's going to work. And also we're going to be using very basic settings. So you're probably not going to be uh, confused in that. Okay. So yeah, let's start. Okay, so I just imported this uh, render in Adobe Lightroom, and I'm just gonna open it uh, in develop. And okay, cool. So now let's uh, start working on this render. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be increasing the vibrance a little bit. Something like that should do. Yeah, so the vibrance really makes the colors pop and everything. Uh, next up, we're gonna be um, working with the contrast. Let's increase the contrast a little bit as well. Not too much though, just a tad bit. Something like that. Let's try increasing the exposure. Actually, I'm not going to do it that much. Just a tad bit. Yeah, something like that should do. Actually, let's do 0 0.08. How about that? That works. Uh, the shadows, let's try working the shadows. No, I, th I think everything is basically perfect in this render. Let's try bringing up the shadows up a little bit. Something like that should be good. And with the clarity, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be bringing it down to give it more of that dreamy look, which we are going for. I'm just going to add some bloom and it's just going to make it look much better, right? So if you were going for something which has more texture, then we would have uh, increased the clarity. However, for this render, we're just going to be decreasing it. Something like that should be good enough. Perfect. And apart from that, uh, I think everything else is basically just uh, perfect. So you can see previously it was very um, dull, and but now it's very vibrant. So yeah, it's definitely an improvement. Uh, I'm just going to try increasing the saturation just a tad bit not much yeah perfect uh let's see um yeah so uh, it, it is it just looked so bad before it just didn't it like it was so it was lacking contrast and now it's just shining and um the colors are popping and everything right so this really made a huge difference anyways uh so yeah um apart from that let's try working with the temperature no i'm just gonna set it to zero we're not going to be messing with that. And apart from that, I think everything else is basically good. I don't want to waste your time uh, by doing like uh, random settings, which aren't which aren't even going to make a difference. But yeah, uh, so yeah, that is. Uh, so yeah, this is um, basically it. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you have any problem in any part of the tutorial, then be sure to let me know down uh, by starting a discussion. And I'll be sure to help you out. And I'll be sure to solve your problem. And yeah, apart from that, just thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.